Okay, last thing we need to learn today is called the co-function identities. You know how the sine of 30 and the cosine of 60 are the same? And the sine, uh, I don't know, and vice versa, right? Okay, I think we talked about this once before. We talked about how complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. And complementary angles, if you do the function and the co-function of complementary angles, you get the same answer. So let me just kind of, maybe that'll, well, let me just give you the identities and then we'll talk about them. So the sine of pi halves, which is what angle? 90. Minus, we're going to call it u. So if you have an angle 90 minus a different angle, that would be like 30 and 60. So if we had this angle was 30, the 90 minus 30 would be 60. And wouldn't the cosine of that angle be the same thing? So tangent of pi halves minus an angle is the same as the cotangent of that angle. Secant of 90 minus an angle is the same as the cosecant of that angle. And then do these go the other way as well? Yeah, so these are known as cofunctions. Why are they called cofunctions? How do you know which one is the cofunction of which? It's the co that does it. So you have sine and cosine. You have tangent and cotangent. And you have secant and cosecant that these rules work with. Okay, so just remember pi halves is your 90 degrees, so if you have an angle and you take 90 minus that angle, you're finding the complementary angle. The cofunction is the same as the function of that complementary angle. Does that make as much, does that, is that as clear as mud, basically? Does it make sense? Okay, let's do a quick example. Okay, what did we learn today? What was our main uh, identities that we learned about earlier? Some and difference identities for what? For cosine, not for sine, right? This one's sine. So since we don't know the identities for sine yet, we have to use the identities for cosine because we don't know them yet, okay? So is there a way that we can change this to cosine? First, change to cosine so we can use cosine identities, right? Okay, so how do we change sine of 5 pi 12 to cosine instead? So pi halves minus 5 pi 12. So we need a common denominator to do that. So cosine 6 pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 12, which is the cosine of pi over 12. And since we were just barely talking about that problem, it's not on this page. How can we do that using the identities we learned today? We just barely talked about this, but we're just taking it this step further. Use a sum or a difference. I think it's, what is pi 12? It's 15, so we'd have to use a difference, correct? So we suggested we could either do pi thirds minus pi fourths or pi fourths minus pi hat. Wait, pi six. 
pi force minus pi six, is that okay? Which basically, if it helps, it means you're doing the cosine of 45 minus the cosine, uh, yeah, cosine of 45 minus 30. So then I'm probably not gonna finish this problem all the way because the bell's imminent, but cosine of 45, cosine 30 plus sine 45, sine 30, square root of two over two, square root of three over two, square root of two over two, one half, simplify, take it from there, right? So do you see how we're now using the co-function with the, the co-function identities with the sum and difference identities so that you can change a sine to a cosine and then use the cosine identities? That's all I have written down. We barely kind of got through everything. We might have to pick up some pieces next time, though, because we went through it so fast. Deep breath. Chapter three is the hardest. So we're not done with chapter three, but chapter three is the hardest.